Crypto markets took a big hit uh, last week. Prices were in the red again this morning. Bitcoin has now lost uh, more than half its value since its record high last year. Joining us to discuss more is Perry Ann Boring, founder and president of the Chamber of Digital uh, Commerce. Perry Ann, it's, it's good to see you. If it was, uh, if it was some other asset or, or like, like a stock or even a tech stock, even a high flying, even a biotech stock, we're used to things that, that may get totally overvalued and they pull back and then they maybe garner more interest at those levels and go back up. We've seen that many times. But these, are, these, these swings are so large. Um, and it, it kind of, we, we forget how much the, that Bitcoin had already appreciated just in the last 24 months or so. I mean, even at 33,000, it's staggering how much it's up. But all we see front and center is how much it's down. And certainly, you couldn't use this as a, in, in a utilitarian way very easily as a currency. So it still hasn't achieved that. Well, good morning, Joe. Uh, Bitcoin has been, has been called and compared to a digital gold, a new form of gold by the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell himself. Volatility is not necessarily a bad thing, and it's normal to see 30 to 50 percent volatility in the crypto markets in any given month. Uh, the markets are behaving just as expected. And despite the fact that the price is down, the fundamentals of the network are as strong as ever. The growth rate is continuing to increase at a rate that's uh, more exponential than what the internet grew in the late uh, 1990s and early 2000s. And the Bitcoin hash rate is at an all-time high. There's $32 million of Bitcoin being generated every day. There's very strong economic, uh, economic incentives uh, for more nodes to join on the network. And the power of the Bitcoin network is at an all-time high. The fundamentals are still strong. The regulatory overhang is what's always mentioned. What do regulators need to do? What do you expect them to do? Will it be a, a, a positive in the end? Or are some of these worries justified for, for people about what, what it looks like? And then you've got, you know, emerging competition all over the place in terms of, I don't know, alternatives to Bitcoin that might use less energy, which is also something that we hear quite a bit about. Yeah, I mean, the regulatory uncertainty continues to be one of the biggest challenges for the adoption of this technology. Uh, despite that, according to a survey from Fidelity Digital Assets, seven out of 10 institutional investors around the world plan to buy or invest in digital assets within the next five years. I think this is absolutely inevitable. Is it going to be a little bit of a rocky road? Yes, and in terms of the regulatory perspective, the, the fate of cryptocurrencies has already been decided. Uh, they are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. Right now, we're negotiating what those regulatory guardrails look like. And yes, regulators have justified concerns. There are things that we need structure around and all that's being put into place today. And is that having an impact on uh, the markets? I think so. Uh, but I think in the long run, uh, there's really very little governments can do to uh, change uh, you know, the fundamentals of what's happening. And that is that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are going to have a key role in the global financial system. When it went to 20 a couple years ago, 20,000, and then fell back to two, three, four thousand, 4,000, um, we had the same type of, of sentiment now, I, I think, where oh, it's going to zero. And I'm seeing that a lot. People, you know, Twitter, ah, it's going to zero. It's worthless. It's a Ponzi scheme. You see all, all that comes out. But now we're talking about this at 33,000, which that's to put that in perspective. I guess my question is, can it make the round trip back to eight? I think you know, one of the mistakes that a lot of people make who are getting into crypto is that they're just myopically focused on the price and they're ignoring the value. We all know what the price is. You know, when you're making an investment decision, you also need to know how to value an asset. And there's a number of models that professional crypto investors are using today. And they're today they're all between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars. 
per Bitcoin. These models are over 90% correlated. And what they're telling us is that Bitcoin is undervalued today. So again, I really encourage people not just to focus on the price, focus on the fundamentals of the network and figure out how to value something before you invest in it. And there's a lot of tools out there for investors that are available in the market today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.